of the theme of our, our lessons today has been controlling your body to control the ball and to control the bat. When we're teaching fielding to young fielders, we want to also control the body. It makes it much easier if you're controlling your body and controlling your glove to field the ground ball. Consistency is the key. What you want to think about when you're putting your fielders into a good, consistent position is the shape of a triangle. And how we make a triangle for fielders is by using, we're going to use Jake as a de to demonstrate, is using his glove and his feet to create the shape of a triangle. So Jake's going to be in a nice balanced position. Notice where his feet, knees are bent, heads up, back slightly bent. He's going to put his glove out first, and he's going to just simply lower that glove to the ground from that position. If you notice, we end up with the shape of a triangle between the glove and his two feet. His head is up to see the ball. His glove is out in front to allow him to adjust to a bad hop, to allow him to funnel a good ground ball into him, to allow him to attack a slow hit ground ball. One of the ways you can get young fielders into this position so that they can comfortably field it is you can take a bucket and you simply put that bucket underneath and go ahead and sit on the bucket and put the glove out. And that's a really nice way of allowing the young fielders to see what it feels like for the position that they should be in. What I've seen a lot of is you see a lot of kids just simply put their head down and their gloves straight into the ground, or they bend their knees too much. But this gets them into a really nice, comfortable position to then roll them some ground balls and allow them to feel what it feels like to be in control of their body, to be in a proper body position. Now that we've reviewed the basic fielding position as far as body parts, thinking about that triangle, getting the glove out in front of your body to adjust to a good uh, bad hit baseball, or even a good hit baseball, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, include, incorporate the throwing motion that we worked on earlier along with the fielding motion. We're going to use Jake again. And Jake's going to start off with what I call the gunfighter position. See his hands are by his hips. He's in a ready position. This is where the fielder is when the pitcher is in the process of throwing the ball. So when the pitcher's winding up, he's in this position. As the pitcher goes to deliver the ball, he does a creep. So he's going to go right foot, left foot, right, left, hands out in front. Now if the ball is hit to him, he's going to go right foot, left foot again to field the ball on the ground, and when he collects the ball up, right foot, left foot, and throw. So what we did there is we worked that right foot, left foot throwing mechanism that we worked earlier. We incorporated it with a good sound fielding position, and we have a whole process that does a couple things. It gets the fielder moving to the ball. It also cuts the distance down to the base that the fielder's throwing, gaining some momentum, shortening the throw, increasing accuracy, being aggressive towards the baseball. Just like in pitching and hitting, the more repetitions you can get your young ball, young ball players, the better. We want to get them on a field, fielding the ball as often as possible. One of the things that I've found is that I don't hit ground balls often to my fielders. I prefer to roll them. I prefer to have small controlled drills where I can increase the repetition and I can also monitor their body position, their footwork, how they attack the ball, how they field the ball. One of the drills we use is real simple. We have our fielder taking his glove off, no glove whatsoever. Good low position, thinking about his triangle, getting his hand out. We have his teammate roll the ball sharply, and he rolls it right back. Keep going, just keep going right back as quick as you can, right back and forth. Stay in that position. What this does, in addition to repeating the motion, it also gets his legs used to feeling what it feels like to be in a good fielding position. It is not an easy position to stay in. A lot of young fielders avoid it because it's not comfortable. This drill forces him to be down, gets his legs in shape, and allows him to see what it feels like to do it. Another drill that we have, go ahead and stop guys, grab your glove Jake. Very similar positions, again with a teammate, with a friend, go ahead and get down in your fielding position and what we're going to do here is we're going to throw short hops into Jake's glove and he's going to be aggressive with his glove and attack through the ball. So just like that, again in a good fielding position, butt low, knees bent, head up, notice he's in a good attacking position, nice hands there Jake, and he attacks the ball outward. A lot of coaches, a lot of old time coaches like to teach a more passive glove position. I just feel sometimes with young players that doesn't work. I like to see it, players attack the ball with their glove going through it, being real aggr aggressive. So we work the center of his body. Hold on one second, Vinny. Then we turn, turn your feet a little bit this side, and we go to the left side of his body. Go ahead. Okay. Again, attacking glove on the outside of the body, just like that. Notice each time that he catches it, he brings the ball back into the center of his glove so he's ready to field and throw. One more from here, and then we're going to go to backhands. Now we're going to go to Jake's right side, and he's going to turn. And he's going to attack the ball again with his glove, just like that, in a good backhand position. Again, I like these drills because you can get a lot of reps, a lot of time, a lot of repeat motions, a lot of the same things, and you can encourage your players to learn how to do it without thinking. It's just as easy as that. One more time. Good job, guys. 
Once we've worked the basic infield positions, the proper fielding technique where your body should be, done some nice repetitions close up to give the fielder a lot of times to touch the ball, we then want to create some opportunities for him to transition and move his feet, making good throws, fielding some different angled ground balls. I, tend to, I like to do this without hitting. We do this by throwing, rolling the baseball, allows us to get a lot more reps in, quality reps where the coach can really control what the movements of his players are. First one we're going to do is from third base. We're going to roll the ball in front of the third baseman at an angle directly in line with first base. He's going to move his feet at an, on an angle, transition his feet, make a good solid throw. Go ahead. All right from there, running at the base, making a good throw. Let's come back and try that again. Okay. Angle the ball down. Good solid throw, nice angle of his feet, nice angle of attack. Notice that he's consistently cutting the distance to the base, gaining ground on his target, allows him to make more accurate, solid throws. Now we're going to work one where we're going to go laterally to the left. He's going to transition his feet back into first base and make an accurate throw. Go ahead, Jake. A little more to the left on that throw if you could. All right. There you go. Lateral movement, transition, stands up. Notice how his feet go from moving side to side to move in towards first base so he can make a good accurate throw. Right there, feet angle, there's his throw. Most errant throws come from bad footwork. If we can get our players, if you're a player, if you make good footwork, if you're not lazy with your feet, transition them into the proper position, making accurate throws is pretty simple. Next thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna cut in front of you, Jake. I'm gonna throw the ball right to him this time and you're gonna simulate it a, a backhand. And what we're gonna do, ball's in the hand, fielder in the fielder position, he's gonna take two or three accurate or hard steps, go down, then come up throwing. So let's see what it looks like. Jake, ball in front of you. Move now. There you go. Down to the ground. Get up. Make an accurate throw just like that. Let's try it again. So we throw the ball right to the fielder. Makes his move to the right. Gets the ball. Comes up. Makes a good accurate throw. For a lot of young players, when they try to make that throw from the third baseline, they have a real difficult time getting it to the first baseman. It's a long throw. I have no problem teaching them how to bounce it on one hop. One of the keys to bouncing the ball to the first baseman is to make sure it bounces 10, 12 feet in front of him. Give that first baseman a chance to see the ball bounce up and catch it. What I see a lot of young players do, they try to throw the ball all the way, they short hop the first baseman, first baseman misses it, third baseman gets an error. So when we're going to make that throw, you can bounce it, make sure we bounce it with plenty of room. Let's try the backhand one more time. Right to him, move hard to your right, come up, make a good throw right there. Nice job, Jake. One of the things that I find with young teams, young players in particular, they get greedy. They try to make the great play instead of just learning how to make the good play, the simple play, the easy play. As a coach, I just ask my team to get an out. Make the easy play in front of you, get an out. If we do that, we'll beat the other team. With that in mind, one of the drills that I like to work with my infielders, again, just rolling the ball, is really making sure that if there's a ground ball hit to my shortstop with a guy on second, first base, we make sure we get that out. 100% of the time. So a simple drill to teach them how to transition the ball over. What we're going to do is we're going to work a drill where Jake's going to get the ball on the way to the second base. He's going to field it in front. He's going to put it into his bare hand. He's going to accelerate with his right foot as he throws and follow the ball all the way to the base. Let's see how Jake does it. Roll the ball, go get it, accelerate, following the ball. The idea here is to make a simple, easy, good play not necessarily a great one. One do we get it out and one we deliver the ball to the second baseman in a very easy fashion. Let's try it one more time. Good. Over there, accelerate with your back foot right to the base. Nicely done. As we move on with this, we want to probably do eight to ten reps every time you do this drill so that you can perfect this. This is an easy out and we don't want to miss it. Next one we're going to do, the ball's going to be hit basically right at Jake. What he's going to do, he's going to clear his front side and make a nice game speed simple throw to the second baseman. What you'll find is a lot of young players have a really difficult time making that short throw. Making a long, hard throw is easy. Making that short, easy throw is really hard. So by practicing it here, again, when your brain shuts down and you get nervous, muscle memory, repetition will allow you to get the easy out. So let's see how Jake does. Right at him, step back, nice, simple throw. We deliver the ball to the second baseman in a fashion that he can handle easily. Let's try it again. Clears his front foot, simple throw right from there every time. What you'll see a lot of young players do, and if you're, if you're a young player, you'll find you might do this, they try to move their feet forward, and what happens, they end up decelerating their arm as they throw, and instead of making an accurate throw, they throw it to their feet or over their head. By clearing that front foot, you get to accelerate, make a good sharp throw, make it accurate. 
This time we're going to go into Jake's backhand. Nice firm throw to his backhand. You're going to see he's going to set his feet, step up, and make, make a good, accurate, short throw. Again, one more time with the backhand. Set his feet, good, accurate throw. Notice, not a lot of foot transitioning as far as moving. Good, stable core when we do this. Again, working that same thing of consistency and being in charge of your body, making sharp throws, accelerating through the throws instead of decelerating their arms and making an inaccurate throw. One of the things when we're fielding the ball, a lot of repetitions, it gets a little bit dry, it gets a little bit boring. So we like to finish with something that's fun. So what we do is we do a Jeter play. Derek Jeter with the Yankees makes this play as good as anybody. So we throw the ball out into short left field. Player runs it down, he dives, he chases it, any way he can get it, turns on a dime and sees how accurate we can make the throw. So let's give one a go. There it is, go get it. Oh my gosh. How about that way to finish it right there? Good job, boys. Moving to second base now, one of the things I want the young fielders to pay attention to is that each of the stations that we've gone through involves a specific skill that's not necessarily unique to that position. It's a skill that helps them throw a ball to a teammate accurately, deliver a ball back to first base to get it out, knock a ground ball down in the proper fashion. So as we move around the infield, all of these drills pertain to each of the different positions. When we throw the ball underhand from shortstop to second base, that's just like the first baseman throwing the ball to the pitcher covering first base. So as we work on these drills, even though you might not be that position, learn each of these specific skills. They will help you be a better baseball player. What we're going to do now is work on some issues at some things we deal with at second base. First thing is going to be Jake is going to move towards home plate, then he's going to cover second base, and he's going to send a nice little shuffle pass right over to second base. Let's see how it works. So he attacks the ball, gets it, flips the ball over, and if you notice, Jake moves off with his right foot as he goes towards the base, always stepping in the direction he's throwing. Let's try it one more time. Shovel it right over. That a boy. Really nicely done. Okay, second drill we're going to do is involving the second baseman moving towards the bag. Ball hitting the hole. Again, he's going to move over sharply with his feet, get the ball, keep his nose down to the ground, make a nice accurate throw to the shortstop. Go ahead. Right out there. Stay low. Good accurate throw. One of the things we always want to focus on when we're delivering the ball to a teammate is making it easy for him to do his part of the play. Big part of these drills, make it a good accurate throw that he can work with easily, make the next throw. Let's try it again. Keep it down, nice accurate throw, well done. Good. Now, as we move over more to the second base position, we're going to work on ground balls hit directly at the second baseman. Now, when second baseman throw to second base, they have two choices. One is field the ground ball, transi transition their feet, make an accurate throw, or field the ground ball, simply drop down to the left knee and make a good sharp throw. I like the second one because it allow you, allows you again to accelerate your arm, throw the ball a little harder from a lower position, making it easy for the shortstop to field the ball. Let's try it. First time, let's transition your feet. Transition your feet, good accurate throw, very well done. And one more time. Transition your feet, good accurate throw, a boy. Now let's try one where he's going to drop down to his left knee, make a good sharp throw to the second base. There, drop, right there. If you watch how he does that, he's able to gather the ball into his body. That momentum allows him to twist his hips and make a good accurate throw. Right there, very nicely done. Now the last one that we're going to work on is going to be a ball hit to the second baseman's left side. And what he's going to do is simply transition his feet to the left. He's going to let the ball get slightly past him, leaving his glove out, stepping around the glove, and making an accurate throw to second base. Let's give that one a try. Goes and gets the ball, lets the ball get past him, turns and makes the throw. This is a real nice play when a ball is hit to your left side. By stepping around the ball, when your body comes back into position, you're facing directly at second base, and the throw is simple. Try one more time. Over there, let it come around, step around. Make a good, accurate throw. Very well done. Nice job, boys.